What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, our last show, we covered the movies that James Gunn announced for his first chapter. And uh, when you get a chance, please go check that episode out. Um, we went deeply into what we like about a lot of those um, uh, titles and what the possibilities are. Uh, so go check that out. Now we're going to talk about the shows. I'd have to say, Brian, I am not that excited about the shows. <laughs> and I was... Before we did the show, I was thinking, like, how I'm going to, you know, go about expressing how not excited I am about these shows. Depending on who... Right now, Brian, I'm not excited. Depending on who they cast, director, you know, let, let's see who who's involved here, right? Um, but what are your thoughts on on the announcement, and then we'll get into each of uh, the the shows. Yeah, the films are a lot cooler than the shows. But let's call it straight. Like I, I just there's not a lot here. We do know that some of these shows will wind up on HBO, HBO Max. We know some will be sold to other services. But this was not awesome. Like if I'm grading the anticipation, there's only one show on the only one new show on this list. I'm not including the penguin in this discussion because it was already underway. Only one new show on this list I'm super excited about. I think there's one other show that has a pretty good chance to be a hit. It just may not be for me. But mm -hmm. other than that, kind of underwhelming relative to the film stuff. So let's get into it. The first one I want to discuss, Brian, I was like, why? And that's Waller. Uh, I'm guessing, Brian, that her inclusion is for world building. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm quite interested, Brian, in her story just yet I know she's a huge antagonist for the Justice League as a whole not necessarily for one individual it's usually a Justice League thing when you're dealing with Amanda Waller who knows if Amanda Waller has anything to do with the outsiders Brian we don't know if these are direct uh, adaptations of some of these storylines we'll see they have room to, to, to play around with but uh, what do you think, Brian, of Waller? I think it's because they have an IOU to Viola Davis. She basically has had a false start with Suicide Squad, a false start in her Black Adam cameo, and they're kind of like, we have this awesome actress sitting around who's never really gotten to be the full-scale Amanda Waller. Oh, and by the way, we don't want to do a Peacemaker season two, so let's invite some of that cast into this show as well. But I think you're 100% right. It is the only intrigue of this show, which I gave only one and a half batarangs to, is about how does it connect back to this interconnected DCU. That's it. Other than that, this show has to prove to me with an outstanding premiere that I should actually make time to watch it. Yeah. I keep calling it the outsiders. It's the authority. The authority. Did I say the outsiders before? Is the authority. You said the outsiders. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feel free to Cla correct me. Classic right? Francis Ford Coppola <laughs> movie, actually. <laughs> Go look at the yeah. IMDb of The Outsiders. Every great young actor started in The Outsiders. Yeah, you know who I saw in a, an episode of Matlock? Uh, uh, Matlock, uh, Lawrence Tate. Uh, yeah. Young Lawrence Tate in the, in, in, in the Matlock episode. Um, so that's Waller. I, I, I give it the same amount of batarangs, one and a half. I, 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 unless you start giving me more, um, my interest is going to remain at its current levels, which is very, very low. Uh, the next one, Brian, Paradise Lost. Let's get into that one. This is supposed to be, everybody's on this Game of Thrones type of, you know, everybody got to have their own, and this is going to be theirs. I'm pretty sure a lot of guys are going to be very happy about this show, Brian. Uh... uh but uh, I don't. I'm my only 
interest in this is finding out where it's leading towards. Is it leaning towards uh, a new Wonder Woman? Uh, is it leading towards something bigger at play that connects everything? I don't know. Uh, so let's see. Let's see. I'm, I, I, there's really, I, I would put it around the same one and a half for me, Brian, at least. One and a half totally batter rank. Totally agree. Um, I think they're making a mistake calling this like their Game of Thrones because I think people have a certain brand identity with what Game of Thrones entails from like a rating and content perspective. And I find it awfully hard to believe that this show will embody that. So I think it's much more, my only interest is really, as you said, it's the mythology. I mean, there are characters that can be very relevant to the DCU that might be interesting, whether it be, they call it gods and monsters, right? Like they could have mm. some of the literal gods be a little more involved around this Amazonian society. But beyond that, and ultimately, this has to lead to Diana if she's not an actual young character in the show to begin with. So other than that, this one feels like, I don't know, like almost lip service because they didn't want to do or carry forward Wonder Woman 3. And it, I, 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 I actually, in a weird way, think Waller has a better chance of success than this show does just because Waller is so ingrained in the Justice League DNA and because Peacemaker did develop a following in season one. This one has the feel like it could be one and done and, and not good if they don't if they don't get the right showrunner involved. I think this is supposed to be a one and done, I think. Right? I don't see how you would do a season two or season three. I, I don't know. Unless you're, again, building towards something that this is only meant to be uh, two hmm. seasons or three. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. And another reason why Waller perhaps may work is that... You know, Viola Davis is, is 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 a great actress. So um, I'm hoping that they put her in a situation where we see her a lot more of her, uh, sort of like a kingpin. You know, manipulative and 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 just uh, you know controlling the strings. So uh, let's see, let's see. The next one, Brian, was the first time I heard of this. I'm sure for many DC fans. Uh, or comic book fans they've heard of these guys Creature Commandos Brian <laughs> the, the title says it all and I don't care <laughs> at all I'm a zero on this they had to have an animated show I don't know why they had to choose something so obscure I don't understand why they're saying we want to voice cast people who will ultimately be the live action version of these characters what is that like so we don't, we're not going to see these people. Why do we care what they look like for some project that may never happen? I think this thing is dead on arrival and it's, it's a zero for me. Brian, but that is why they, they, they uh, that's why I said it, this was ambitious because you not only forget about the, the voice acting, those have to be fantastic, but now we got to see them. That also has to match. Right. So, and we don't know how long these dudes are gonna uh, are, are gonna uh, are gonna come on on, on live screen we, live action? We don't know how long that's gonna take. So this is weird for me, Brian. But all we can say is, let's see. I'm always down for a good animated show. I love animated series, Brian. I, I, I'm always up for for watching those. But I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I just feel like every I just feel like every minute of this show, I'm gonna be like. These are dollars that could have gone to Cape Crusader and you chose this. Sorry. That's just how I feel right now. But Cape Crusader is that 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 money bringer. You know what I'm saying? So And that's fine. If it, as long as that thing is doing well on Amazon, I'll watch that instead. But this thing is not on my list of I have to be there, episode one. Brian. Booster Gold. Yes. Based on some of the rumors that of who may be interested in playing this role, Brian, has me interested. Initially, when the Booster Gold title was announced, I was sort of like, ah, you know, another jokester, funny, comedic thing. But 
who knows with this possible buying out now again i say possible choice of glenn powell playing this role of booster gold i think takes it up there from not interested or sort of to like i'm interested now to see what this would be because he would be a perfect uh he would be perfect for this role this is the show I predict will be actually a pretty big hit. I just don't think it will be, I don't think it will be our favorite show. But by all accounts, this is a character with a huge following. And like I said, this is a character that has been requested many times of Warner Brothers in DC. There is a built in demand, I think, for this. And I do get the mass appeal of this sort of, you know, almost like, I don't know what to call like charlatan future guy with no powers who uses the tech to kind of become this like oh, the Justice League Unlimited episode that he's in is actually pretty good like it's yeah, pretty funny yeah, yeah so like I get how this could actually I think the key you're you're focused on the lead I agree this is one of those it has to be the synergy of who is run who what comedic mind is in is behind this show because it'll yeah. tell you what kind of right it's like you and i don't necessarily vibe with james gunn humor it's not him who's going to be in the room so they got to find a guy who's got just the right style of humor and then you marry that with if it is pal someone who can do comedy pretty effortlessly i think you get a hit i think you get a real hit actually that will play on hbo i don't think this is going anywhere this is going to you know kind of prime time tvma i think it's going to be kind of yeah off color and i think it'll be i think it could be very entertaining i just don't know if it'll be my favorite because i don't think it's really aimed at me uh yeah i agree so i gave it two and a half because i think like i said i think it's interesting and and i think for more people it might might be like a four like a four honestly but i gave it two and a half better i i i i give it three i give it three um just for the name of of glenn powell being attached to possibly taking on that role if he chooses to and if james gunn's if james gunn chooses him as 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 his lead i think is is a great so is a promising show but before we move on to uh to our last one which is the big one this popped into my head do you think because listen James Gunn has already, he said he already wrote C C Creature Commandos. He's writing Superman. He's getting nudged by Peter Saffron to, to, to possibly direct Superman, which I think you and I agree he's not going to do it, and he's going to probably tell Peter, don't ever do that again. Um, but do you feel that people are sort of relying on him too much? Um, for something like, let's say, Booster Gold, that's right up his alley, Brian. Uh, I don't think he's doing it, though. I don't think he's oh, doing it. Let's, okay. okay. I think he's I... making a concerted effort to get other voices in the room. I believe him when he says that. I think he he does have a he does seem to have a sense of self awareness that like his style is not for everyone. He's trying to make this something for everyone, and I think if anything, he seems a little gun shy, pun intended, about being the dominant voice in all of this so i actually go the other way i'm not i'm not too worried about that i am just more worried about who do they get like there are brands of humor out there where this could be awful like witness like she hulk a show that was trying to be very funny some people found it very funny we found it completely wrong way and a lot of other people found it completely wrong way so you don't want that for this kind of you don't want this show to be controversial yeah. you want it to be memorable and yeah. Yeah. funny but not in the right sense yeah yeah Last but not least, certainly the most uh, interesting of them all, The Lanterns, Brian. This was a project that we thought was not going to happen, that was being led by Mr. Greg Berlanti. Uh, so this was, for me, I was expecting this to look like a CW affair. And now that's not happening. Um, it's not going to be the cosmic, you know, two cops in space this is going to be grounded in on earth and this is going to be sort of like a true detective which was the first season was fantastic I, I didn't watch any other seasons after that but you know you know what i'm talking about that sort of mystery suspense type film with green lanterns brian what are your thoughts on this um uh, and the implications 
Yeah, huh? that's the thing. It's it's four batarangs for me. It would have been five if it was in space. That's my only. I'm dinging it because I just. I it has the feel of like they don't have the money. Space TV yeah, yeah, shows yeah, yeah, are freaking yeah, yeah. expensive, yeah, 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 and that's why they're putting on Earth. But if this is you know a lethal weapon style. Oh, and by the way, the other reason I'm excited, they did scrap the Berlanti project. And let's let's not mess around. Hal Jordan, John Stewart, let's go. Don't give us like all these other satellite lanterns and people. Give us the main guys. And I'm fine with having both of them. That's great. Let's roll with that. There can be more than one lantern in this universe. And yeah, let's 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 find out what is what are they after? Because we've been teased that this mystery will become central to the rest of the DCU. So that's all I really need to know. Now, it does sound like this will be big budget prestige TV. So I'm on the lookout for big names here. I'm expecting people we know to be writing, to be directing, to be star. I think of all the shows that are on this list, this is going to be a high profile show on par with The Penguin. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely there for this. This is the one that I'm like, whenever this is premiering, I will be parked in front of my TV ready to watch. What's interesting, Brian, about this show is that I, because it's going to be a series, uh, I don't suspect they're going to have huge opposition in this film or a big antagonist. I think whoever it is, it's just going to be obviously a small fry um, and it's going to lead towards whatever they have planned for chapter one or in the future. I don't know. Uh, but Brian... <clears throat> This is certainly one people that have been waiting for, Brian. This is another. These are these are another one of those things that I say, like I've said with Fantastic Four uh, and other films. This has to work now. Yeah. You you got a pretty. You don't have to say that. I guess for all of them, Brian. But for Superman, for Batman, for Green Lantern, it got to work. Yeah. But this can work. It can. It's not maybe my ideal format, but this can. You get the right hands around this. This could be a really exciting show. But six ep what I don't know how many episodes of this, but you know, how much action do we expect? How much dialogue? I would I would suspect we're going to have a lot of dialogue and, and a lot of slow um things will look cool. Yeah. This is very interesting, Brian, because our minds were all set on cosmic. So now that this is on Earth, again, what opposition stands in their way and um, how isolated is this situation that no one else is alerted to this? You know what I'm saying? So For sure. let's see what's going on with these shows. Lanterns and Booster Gold are the only one that I'm really um uh, kind of interested in when i look at the, this lineup is like all of these are let's see except for for green lantern i think this is the most anticipated one uh and hopefully like i said brian san diego comic-con that's 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 the time and place that everybody's gonna be waiting for to get the 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 revelation of who is who and what is what uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the show lineup for the, the, the first chapter or partial chapter of the DCU in terms of its shows. And uh, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. Uh, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that possibility of Booster Gold being played by Glenn Powell. I think that's a perfect cast. Uh, hopefully that gets done. Uh, but we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. There's a new sheriff in town.